Fake news is still flooding social media, and there's a lot of it in Spanish. And since 13% of the US population speaks Spanish at home, this disinformation can have a real impact on American politics without most English speakers ever noticing. As a group, Latinos are more likely to spend more time on social media platforms. And since 70% of US Latinos speak Spanish in the home, misinformation in that language impacts other Latino communities as well. For example, misinformation shared on Facebook has significantly fueled vaccine hesitancy amongst Latinos. But Facebook's owner Meta and other social media companies don't seem to care. They predominantly monitor and address disinformation and misinformation in English language, but YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, regardless of the platform, just mostly don't really do that when it comes to Spanish language. Now it's important to note that much of this misinformation is actually disinformation. The difference being misinformation is unintentionally spread, spread and disinformation is intentional. There's something inauthentic about it, meaning that you're either maybe setting up a, a website or an identity that sounds like a real news website. And so you're cashing in on the credibility that people give to news outlets, or you're using bots um, or fake accounts to trick an algorithm into helping spread or amplify a piece of misinformation, um, or you're, using, you're building a network. The bot networks and fake news websites that spread disinformation are often set up with an agenda in mind. And sometimes that agenda is making money. For example, disinformation has become a cash cow for the anti-vaccine movement. 70% of all anti-vax disinformation comes from just 12 influencers, and organizations owned by top anti-vax influencers make at least $36 million a year combined. Disinformation is also deployed for political purposes. In 2020, much of the online disinformation seen in Spanish came directly from President Trump's re-election campaign, namely the pages Equipo Trump, and Latinos for Trump. Pretty much across the board, the 2020 election was the inflection point. That year, pages affiliated with the conservative movement coordinated to spread more and more conspiracy theories in Spanish in order to either win over Latino voters or just dissuade them from voting at all. The big narrative that we see is that somehow the Democrats, and in particular Joe Biden, are not just socialists, but that they're in cahoots with China to bring communism to the United States. And that ties in a little bit with some of the border disinformation that we see that, you know, Democrats and Joe Biden have opened the border. And that's in part to reinforce this idea that they're trying to flood uh, the country to help bring about this communism faster. And it also is intended when we see the forces behind it to start creating internal friction. The more you have sort of these circular firing squads, disruption, chaos, the weaker that you make that community's political power. Even seemingly non-political groups on apps like WhatsApp become politicized in the run-up to the election. In fact, use of WhatsApp for news has been linked to a significant increase in so-called concerns about socialism or even an imagined communist threat. If you're not familiar with WhatsApp, it's a messenger app, also owned by Meta. Users can make calls and message each other either one-on-one -on -one or in groups. WhatsApp has become an important tool for communicating across borders, which explains its popularity among all people with contacts abroad, not just in Latin America. All messages on WhatsApp are sent directly from one user to another and encrypted, which is a good thing. But that added security also makes it harder to combat misinformation there. With encrypted messaging apps, the platforms themselves can't analyze the content. Um, they don't, they don't, they, you can't have a machine learning algorithm that goes through it because only the end devices have it. Misinformation spread through WhatsApp is extra influential because it comes from trusted sources like close family or friends. It's this complicated mix of the dynamics of the app, the dynamics of the community, and what's happening in the world at that time. And it creates this sort of, this storm. A few years ago, WhatsApp actually put in place some measures to reduce the spread of fake news, like limiting the ability to mass forward messages. That came after several people were killed by angry mobs in India who believed rumors about child kidnappings that have been spread on WhatsApp. This information that originates on other platforms like YouTube and Instagram is shared via WhatsApp, often reaching a much broader audience. Once that disinformation becomes widespread, it sometimes reaches traditional media platforms, like radio. In a weird way, the Latino information ecosystem has kind of consistently proven to be a bit of a petri dish for the types of 
disinformation that the rest of the right-wing echo chamber has scaled. And what is one of the most pivotal voices in that right-wing echo chamber? Conservative talk radio. Most of talk radio is about saying kind of weird things you get engagement. This phenomenon has been especially pronounced in South Florida, where a strong local network of conservative Spanish language media already exists. Radio Mambi, a talk radio station in Miami, has been broadcasting conservative opinions in Spanish to its audience since the 1980s. But recently, these opinions have become more detached from the facts. One report found that Mambi and other similar stations made several false claims in the wake of the January 6th Capitol riot, including baseless accusations of voter fraud in the 2020 presidential election. Miles de muertos votaron. Miles de, pres de presos en las cárceles votaron. Miles de personas que no eran ciudadanos de los Estados Unidos votaron. ¿Cómo es posible que en Pensilvania hay 200 mil votos más el día de la elección que los que estaban en los padrones electorales? Eso no es posible. Those interviews or the ideas on those interviews were then popping up into WhatsApp communities and being repeated in Gurdjieff and spreading. Spanish language radio stations have particularly high levels of trust among audiences in immigrant communities. So when listeners heard the same disinformation on the radio that they were seeing online, those false narratives were being validated by trusted sources, amplifying their impact. And just like online content, the radio can also be manipulated. For example, some industry veterans began speculating that a larger political effort was coordinating radio show call-ins. After a surge of calls to radio shows, all echoed similar talking points about Kamala Harris. But it's not just radio. The Miami Herald Spanish language paper ran a paid ad insert that compared Black Lives Matter and Antifa to Nazis. This information doesn't only cycle between digital and traditional platforms. It moves across borders as well. In fact, much of this propaganda material is originating in Latin America itself. One such source is Informativo G24, an Infowars-style YouTube channel hosted by a longtime news anchor in Colombia. The channel disseminates many familiar conspiracy theories, including the claim that George Soros is the world's biggest puppet master. George Soros y el nuevo orden mundial tienen miedo. While social media companies have been moving to identify and mutualize disinformation campaigns in English, these efforts have not been replicated as successfully in Spanish or other languages. Some platforms have even left up false posts in Spanish after English posts containing the same misinformation were taken down. For example, when YouTube moved to take down QAnon-related content, much of the platform's Spanish-language QAnon content remained online. And Meta has failed to answer even the most basic questions about Spanish language content moderation across its apps. The company reportedly couldn't even name who was in charge of reviewing Spanish content moderation. Mark Zuckerberg himself even vetoed a proposal to provide voting resources in Spanish on WhatsApp, arguing that it would not be, quote, politically neutral. According to Facebook whistleblower Francis Haugen, Meta's problems extend to every language besides English. Facebook has never published which languages are supported and which integrity systems are supported in those languages. Because of this, they are actively misleading the speakers of most large languages in the world by saying, we support 50 languages, uh, but, when, but most of those countries have a fraction of the safety systems that English have. Ultimately, these platforms will always value their bottom line more than the truth or free speech, so it's going to take more than content moderation to create a better information environment online. With that in mind, Media Matters is partnering with Voto Latino to create the Latino Anti-Disinformation Lab. We're not just talking about fact-checking as a part of this Latino Anti-Disinformation Lab. What we're really thinking about is inoculating or preventing the rapid spread of misinformation and disinformation. The lab plans to identify pieces of disinformation and then strategize about the most persuasive ways to respond with their own campaigns. But in order for these campaigns to be effective at rebuilding trust, Carousel says communication has to be consistent. The places that had more organizing and more on the ground efforts actually started to slow down the spread, which is why you saw much less of an impact on of disinformation in Arizona, because there was much more investment in Latino infrastructure there to, to wait, that's a lie, that's coming from nonsense, that's not true. We can talk about this. We're not too scared to engage with the things you're reading in your community. 